Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. We are almost to the start of FC25, and today we're talking about how to get the best start to this game where we will all be starting it, the web app. Yes, guys, we're going to talk about how to get the best start with all the tips, tricks, and information that you need to have a successful short web app period before we get on to the real game of FC25. So if you're excited for FC25 to finally be here, drop a thumbs up on the video, and of course, subscribe if you haven't already. Now let's talk about the web app first with the question, when is the web app even going to be releasing? And we just talked about this a few days ago on a YouTube video on this channel. We actually don't have a confirmed date, guys. We're going off of what we think should be the date the web app is released, which is Wednesday, September 18th. But EA has not confirmed that date yet. Nobody has. There haven't even really been leaks about that date being confirmed. I think it's either going to be the 18th or the 19th, Wednesday or Thursday of this next week, because that falls in line with where the web app has usually been released in previous years so i would watch out for those two dates and then of course like we mentioned and maybe you're thinking this as well that's a very short time frame before we can actually get on to the real version of fc25 via the ultimate edition pre-order early access we're not far from being on the full version of the game even after we start the web app so it's a very short web app period this year this year no matter where it starts, the Wednesday or the Thursday. Now, a couple things to think about. Make sure right now, before the web app goes down for maintenance, which it will pretty soon, that you can log into it, that you have web app access. Check that you have transfer market access as well. If you've made a new account, if you're switching from PC to console or vice versa, or maybe even Xbox to PlayStation, you probably won't have market access if you're creating a new account. Another tip I will give you is, in years past, the servers have been so bad on the web app drop day, it is very helpful if you go in and sign into the web app or sign into your EA account and grab a screenshot of those EA account backup codes. Those could come in really handy if the servers are really problematic on Wednesday or Thursday when we get into the web app for the first time. All right, that's enough of the details. Let's get into how to start this web app. And to do that, I'm going to sign in. So as we sign into the web app for the first time on FC25, we're of course not going to be greeted by this screen. We are going to be greeted by the screen that looks a lot like this. Choosing your starter nation. This is of course what a lot of people sometimes even look forward to. The decision of who to choose in these top nine nations here. Guys, honestly, it doesn't matter that much. Last year I took Germany. The year before that I took Brazil. I was able to complete all the starter SBCs very easily and without any issues or needing to go and buy too many more cards. Now, I will say, Brazil, Germany, France, those are probably the top three options. So if you want to go with one of those three, I think you'll be set up for success. But take whatever nation you want to take. It doesn't really matter who you take in terms of what kind of cards you're going to pack. It's not like you're going to pack Mbappe if you pack France or choose France or pack Neymar if you choose Brazil. You're going to be getting gold fodder cards to do SB season and a lot of bronzes and silvers. We just say Brazil, France, or Germany because it might help you with some of those foundational SBCs that require more of those types of players and those nations have a lot of players in different leagues so that's why we kind of talk about those three but here's the next big tip that I can uh, give you as you start your ultimate teams as you go to the next screen and choose your kits and your badge this is your first opportunity to make coins and you might be like Nate what yeah this matters these right here have the opportunity to make you 1500 coins right off the bat before you get anything else guys don't take your favorite club don't take your favorite nation from this you'll be able to get those kits later choose the biggest nation or biggest club you're wanting to pick a nation that would have gold rare kits so I chose the England kit that's a gold rare kit in the game and also PSG so think biggest club biggest nation when you're taking these kits and also with the badge because it'll give you an opportunity to quick sell all three of those items for just around 500 coins per item which will give you almost it'll be like 1400 and something coins so almost 1500 coins to start off the game will be very very helpful those are kind of your first coins on fc25 ultimate team right there as you choose your kits and your badges and of course now you're into the web app you will see the home screen i don't know how the web app's going to look we're going to figure that out when we get in but of course right away after you get in go to the store that's going to be where the most important stuff is and this is where the next question arises are we going to have welcome backpacks guys there's been a lot of people saying yes a lot of people saying no i was somebody who was saying no but after thinking about it 
I'm thinking there's a possibility that we do, guys. So I'm switching up my tune on that a little bit. Now, the question with the welcome backpacks is, are they going to be tradable like in years past or are they going to be untradeable? That's the question we're going to discuss a little bit later in regards to the market in this video. But first thing is, if you see welcome backpacks there, open them straight away. Who doesn't want to open packs? But the important thing about this will be, this will give you an opportunity to pack more players if there's just packs given to us that you can go and use for SBCs and that'll get you going on your account. If they're tradable, you're going to be able to quick sell some of those players. Like also don't forget to do your preview pack because you could even pack an 85 rated, which would sell for something at the beginning stages of the game of FC 25. And this pack might actually be worth uh, buying if you can build up the coins to get it but open all of your welcome back packs if they're tradable only quick sell a few of the cards from nations that won't be helpful from an SBC so if this was a pack that I got for free I would probably quick sell this center mid and when he chan because those are most likely not going to be helpful in the SBCs that we're thinking about which is hybrid leagues hybrid nations league and nation hybrid which is going to be requiring players from the top nine nations and from most of the top five leagues you'll need players from that with a couple exceptions but i would probably quick sell those just so i could get a few more coins and then keep some of the other stuff that might be higher rated and could sell for people buying teams later on in the next couple of days i would hold on to those players that you feel like have a chance to rise so after you open all the packs that show for you there we are going to go to the sb Sees. But like I mentioned, don't be afraid to quick sell some stuff, guys. Honestly, if you open a, a random pack and you have these badges and stuff in here, even contracts, I mean, the only like chemistry styles that I would keep would maybe be a hunter, a shadow, an anchor, an engine. I would keep those, but then I would quick sell everything else. Obviously, if you get a coin boost, that's an insane pull. You would love that. But I would, don't be afraid to quick sell stuff because you're going to need those coins to go and do the SBCs. Now, when you go into SBCs for the very first time, this is the only SBC that is going to be there. Foundations one and it's the easiest sbc you can possibly do it is four segments all you have to do is you turn into bronze player once you turn into bronze player twice three times and then four times i think this is literally how the sbc looks once you open it up there's no chemistry involved at least that's how it was last year you get a two players pack on tradable it's not for what you get but you have to do this sbc before you unlock the rest of the SBCs in this section. At least that's how it has been previously in the past on this game. But you really only want to do this SBC to start off. And once you get it done, go up in the other packs that you get, a couple of bronze and silver packs. And then all these other SBCs should be appearing if the web app is starting similarly to how it has in previous years. Now you see all these other foundation SBCs that are in here. Foundations 2, 3, 4, and 5. Honestly, guys, skip these. I don't think these are worth it straight away unless they change up some of the rewards. Most of these are untradeable packs. You can see here, premium silver pack, untradeable. If any of these have tradable rewards, there's one. Those would be the squads that would be worth doing. A silver pack, oh no, it says untradeable. Never mind. I, I clicked past that. I read over it. All of these have untradeable rewards, so those wouldn't be worth doing. You would want to get into the hybrid leagues, hybrid nations, or the league and nation hybrid SBCs because those are the best packs, which are going to give you the best rewards even though they are untradeable most likely they will be they were tradable last year for like the first i don't know half a day and it was a mistake ea switched them to be untradeable uh they were also untradable in fiva 23 so i'm expecting these to be untradeable again um and those would be more for like chancing it that you could pack something for your team that's not going to make you coins so we have to be careful with this but of course do the foundations one sbc first and then look at these sbcs here if you want to start doing some and trying to open some packs but then the next thing that i would have to say to you is after you do that foundations one sbc is you still probably want to try to get some more coins if you possibly can we're going to go to the objective section guys yes actually objectives is going to be a place in the foundation section there might be like a welcome back section where you can do some really easy stuff like this one right here where there's different tasks for just applying a chemistry style or completing the foundations one SBC group you're going to get some really bad rewards from this but some of the things I think maybe give you coins there's a couple things as well maybe a weekly objective and milestones that if you just list players um, you will get some XP or SP, whatever it's going to be called in this next year's game. And you could also get uh, a quick pack, which might be worth doing. 
um, complete any three SBC groups. No, it's not in there, but just look for through, look through the objectives for any of those really easy to complete objectives that you can do. Like maybe it's put a player in your squad, apply a chemistry style, get a certain number of chemistry, swap a player from your club. Those kind of like welcome objectives that'll give you a couple hundred coins and a couple of tradable potentially bronze and silver packs. So watch out for that objective section because there will be some good stuff in there and some potential to potentially get a few coins and maybe have your worth in the game, your coin value build up a little bit so that you can go and start to trade. And that is the next thing that you will want to do. After going through the SBCs, seeing if there's any tradable stuff in there, obviously, if there's tradable packs in objectives or SBCs that you can get, go and get those because tradable, tradable, tradable is the most important thing. We don't know exactly how it's going to go down. If EA is going to change any of this stuff, it is pretty much the same way every single year, but there are small differences and we have to be watching out for that tradable stuff. Now, after doing the SBCs and objectives, we're going to go to the transfer market and start looking at prices. And this is where you start to dive in. And I think this is one of the most fun times in the game. Honestly, guys, starting to trade on the web app is all about buying cards and selling cards to people that are doing what you were just doing, because that's the only thing you can do on the web app, right? Is do the SBCs and do the objectives, especially for the SBCs that you were doing, the foundations ones um, that people will start doing just because they see SBCs there and they will want to do them. Same thing with the hybrid league and nations. People will start to do those. Even though they are untradeable, people just will want packs to start their ultimate team and they will start to buy players for those. So what you're going to need to do is look at bronze, silver, and gold players that would be needed for those SBCs. Like specifically, I remember in the past couple of years, Germany, I think right mids, maybe left backs, sell for good amounts on the market for the first couple of hours of the web app as people are building those SBC squads. And depending on the formation, you need a little bit of chemistry. You can find players from those popular leagues and popular nations. So focus on the top nine nations and focus on the top five leagues for building those bronze and silver card sniping filters, some of those quick flips. It's all about the quick flips. You find somebody that people are buying or you find that like, let's say, usually Brazilian goalkeepers are always a very well selling card for the bronze market. Brazilian goalkeepers, let's say they're like 500 coins and you can sit there and snipe them for like 250 or 300 and sell them at 500 and you can just keep doing that over and over and over. That's a type of grinding that you're gonna have to do to get that coin value up at first. But again, guys, it's hard to trade on the web app, especially with all of these packs most likely being more untradeable than they used to be. Like in the past, we would have tradable welcome backpacks and tradable advanced SBCs where we could get a lot of coins, start trading with other bigger cards, and even start to make some investments on the market. But that's just not how it is anymore because most of these packs are untradeable. So it's all about garnering as much coins as you can so that you have more buying power than others and using the bronze, silver, and gold cards that people are using to buy SBCs for, that's where you're going to be making your most coins. Now, as we talk about these SBCs, we talk about the packs. Will they be tradable or untradable? After you get to that market segment of getting through the web app, that's kind of all you can do. I do want to make a couple things and a couple of points very clear, though, before we talk about the market a bit more. Things that you do not want to do on the web app. These are things to avoid, guys. The first thing is Think about building a team. You can't play the game anyway on the web app. Nobody else is playing the game on that first day or two the web app is out. Don't worry about building a team. Literally, who cares about who's in your team? Even if you're putting players that are in your team into the SBCs that you're doing for the starter, um, Foundations 1, maybe if you start doing a hybrid leagues or hybrid nations SBC, it doesn't matter, honestly. Use those players because you will be able to get more packs so easily once you get onto the actual game through the objectives, through gameplay, even through maybe the new rush mode. If you're on early access, there will be easy ways to get packs through the season um, without needing to have a full team. That's a whole thing that we're not understanding yet and we can't understand because we don't have the game. All you need is one player to get into rush. Maybe that's a way that we'll be able to farm packs early on and get season progress and uh, SP and rewards and packs is by playing rush because we won't have a full team of players, but we'll have one player that we can put into the rush mode. I'm just theorizing because we're not on the actual game yet, but don't build a team. That's one thing you do not want to do, and it's going to be a waste of coins if you go ahead and do that. And also don't waste your coins on SBCs. I know we're talking about these SBCs with really good packs that you will want to do at some point in the early stages. But honestly, guys, it's not worth spending too many of your coins. So you want to treat your coins as king, especially in those first couple of days of the web app. The more coins you have going forward, the better off you're going 
to be, especially if you're going RTG free to play. Now, let's talk about the market a little bit more because like I mentioned, the biggest thing out of all this is are the welcome backpacks, if we get them, going to be tradable or untradable? And I want to set the stage for the market and how the market might look depending on how those packs look. Well, last year in FC24, we didn't have any welcome back packs. All we had was like a thousand, two thousand coins from quick selling those kits and badges, like I mentioned, and then maybe a couple objectives that got you to like three to four to five K. It was rough. It was very rough last year on the web app. And as you can tell, player prices were so high because there was like no tradable supply. Nobody had tradable welcome backpacks. Nothing was getting packed tradable in that first day or two of the web app. So prices were crazy high. Messi was 250,000 coins. And then what happened is everybody got on to the full game with early access. This is the beta, don't worry, it's not the full game. But everybody got on to the full game through early access, started opening their 4,600 FC points, and prices crashed because there was a whole bunch of supply. But then after that, prices rose like crazy. So this is a good time if you're watching the market to really recognize are the packs tradable or untradable? Because if they're untradable, the market's going to move a lot like it did last year. If the market is tradable, if those packs are tradable, then you're going to have more of a FIFA 23 type movement to the market where Messi was 90,000 coins when he was a 91 rated card for PSG a couple years ago. It's crazy how fast time flies. But this card was 90. 100,000 coins flat in the first couple of hours of the web app because everybody had tradable packs from welcome back packs and they were trying to sell these insane cards. They were getting so lucky enough to pack, but nobody could afford them because nobody had those coins yet. And still, yes, in FIFA 23, Messi's price did skyrocket after that, but the prices started very low instead of starting high, going low, and then going back up. So that's the difference that it, we have to be watching out for on the tradable versus untradable packs as they come in if we get welcome backpacks and of course if we're watching the SBC section to see if we're getting tradable or untradable advanced SBC packs. Now, the best thing about the web app these days, guys, is that it goes by super duper fast. We don't have to be on the web app for four to five to six days like we used to. It's like, boom, it's just one or two days and then we're into the early access, we're onto the game, things start to take off, content starts to drop and you can really get rolling with your ultimate team and that's where it gets fun. But this web app time period, if all the packs are untradable, it's going to be a slow one to two days. And hopefully, I wouldn't expect content to be dropped on the web app, but hopefully EA give us something, whether it's a tradable pack on the first day, tradable welcome backpacks to make the web app better than it was the past couple of years because it has been really bad these past few years. But again, like I said, it's a very short wait. So if you have any questions, drop them down below in the comments. I know there's a lot of people that are going to be playing this game a lot of different ways, especially when it comes to watching the market and motivations. Maybe you're all about evolutions. Maybe you're all about trying to get on the game right away so you can score 500 goals in a certain man was it 500 finesse shots or something like that that gets you a 100k pack like a lot of those sorts of objectives we're going to be covering that in the how to start fc24 video that's coming soon but if you have any questions drop them down below in the comments i'll be very active there and make sure you check out the other videos on the channel guys we have a lot of fc25 content that we have been uploading before this video after this video to get you guys ready and to have just the most efficient and best possible start that you can have to FC25. Make sure to check the links down below in the description as well. Get plugged in with the Twitch stream on Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, everywhere else. If you enjoyed this video, leave a thumbs up on it. And I'm so excited to get into FC25 with you guys. It can't be here soon enough. It's been Nathan Foot Account, and I'll see you guys in a video tomorrow. Peace.